I see like a man? The young man that uh, is a soldier. I was petrified. <gasps> oh my god. What? Somebody's desperately trying to tune. Me is buzzing like mad. I can, can feel it. it, I can feel it. Alison! Look! Wow. Alison, somebody stood right behind you. I don't turn around. Wardrobe's mm. open. This week, the rescue mediums visit a house on the urban edge of Toronto, where this suburban dream home isn't immune to the nightmarish events. One particular evening at 4.44, I awoke and in front of me stood a man, very gruesome looking. I asked him to go away, didn't say anything, just stared at me. It was very frightening. He tried to stay here alone, but it just didn't work. Joe had to leave the house because he kept hearing noises. The rescue mediums are on their way to help. I don't think we can be far off, Jackie. Unexplained visions may be familiar territory for the rescue mediums, but the same can't be said for these suburban streets. Jackie and Allison are renowned psychic mediums who spend their days and nights showing wayward spirits into the light. But navigation is not their forte. That way. One night I came downstairs around midnight. As I was standing by the sink, I felt this amazingly cold rush go right through my body. This is where we were, down here. Clearly, the rescue mediums have been given no prior knowledge of their destination. Even the name of this location has been kept secret until now. Although days earlier, they had some uncanny premonitions. Right, starting off with antlers. Animal heads. Ah. Uh, and you've got your, your antlers. antlers. Sunflowers. Oh. It was lovely. Oh, that's really nice. A lovely vision of sunflowers. A mirror being very significant. A very old dressing table. Somebody's seen somebody else, or they've seen something, but. You know, when they turn around, there's nobody there. I see, like, a man. You know, I turn around, there's nothing there, nobody there. Now, the, the next one I've got written down is a young man with fair hair in spirit. Now, I've actually physically seen this spirit. Uh, he's a soldier. OK. The night that I saw the, what I would classify as a malevolent apparition, he was standing right there. I was petrified. Feelings of being touched. The minute I lie down without the lights on, I feel compressed. Like I feel that someone is, you know, squeezing me. A vision I had of a small boy, a boisterous, hyperactive child. And then this is very bizarre. I think it's an eagle, a, a white eagle. In addition to their premonitions, the rescue mediums have created these psychic drawings of what they expect to find during their investigation. The rescue mediums arrive at the troubled residence, while inside, the homeowners eagerly await their help. I'd hope the rescue mediums will be able to tell us who or what is, is here. I just like to know who the ones that do come in, why they come in and why they attract to me, and the ones that stay who they are. Jackie and Allison are the rescue mediums, psychics who make house calls. Hi, how are you? Hi. Thank you. Come on in. Hello. Hi, I'm Joe. Hi, Joe. I'm Alyssa. Hi, I'm Mary. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Come on in. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Yes, come on in. After you. The rescue mediums present their premonitions to the homeowners. So I'm starting off with antlers, as I'm obviously on an animal. I don't know which animal. OK. Animal heads. Ooh. A road traffic accident. That's very significant, yeah. OK. Ten past eight. That's the time the accident occurred, yes. Right, OK. Wow. Because that really did come through clearly 10 past 8. Yeah, that's what time it occurred, yeah. Right, OK. And a strong vision that I had of a small boy, a boisterous, hyperactive child. My kids are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> as, as everybody's are. 
Um, a young man with fair hair, he's in the spirit world. I think he was a soldier. He's got some sort of a uniform on. And then this, which was, I felt was uh, like a, a white eagle. You've hit that one right on the head. So we'll um, have a look around if we can. Sure, yeah, of yeah, course. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Next, the rescue mediums begin their investigation and immediately discover... Alison, look! A push right in my back. He's pinching my arm. A disturbing presence. The rescue mediums are investigating this home on the edge of metropolitan Toronto. The night that I saw the malevolent apparition, I was petrified. Joe had to leave the house. Should we have a look outside, then? Yeah. To begin their investigation, the rescue mediums survey the perimeter of the property. There's a funny feel to this, don't you think? Pardon? There's a funny feel to this. Jackie. Did you say something then? Did you call me name? I didn't say a thing. I heard somebody go, Jackie. Right, it wasn't me. Definitely wasn't me. It was a female voice. Right, okay. Jackie has felt her presence. Jackie. What's that? The spirit beckons the rescue medium. The guide in us yeah, then? Yeah, definitely guide in. Jackie and Alison comply. Following this guiding spirit, the rescue mediums are led down to the basement. Oh, oh. <laughs> there you sunflowers. 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 Oh, it was lovely. Oh, that's really nice. This is one big basement, Jackie, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, oh, what's that? A push. Right in my back. Yes. Pushing us this yeah. way. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, wow, Luke. Oh, the book's coming off the shelves. Oh, my God, I've got, like, a real shiver down my spine now. It's a child. Yeah, I think there's a child. I think there's a little boy here. Yeah. A second spirit, this one of a little boy, has manifested. And I'm getting patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Patty cake? Patty cake, patty cake, baker's, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Mark it with, with a B. B and put it in the oven for baby, baby and me. Baby. Baby. Somebody just went. Hang on. I've just got make your way upstairs. Make your way upstairs. Make your way upstairs. Following the guiding spirit's request, the rescue mediums return to the main floor of the house. Go in there. Mm. There's my antlers. <laughs> Animals' heads. Mm. Animal heads. Ah. Uh, and you've got your, your antlers. antlers. I can't look at those, Jackie. You feel us on being pushed away. Do you? From behind? Yeah. So we need to go out. Go They're there, trying yeah, to push, push us. out. Literally pushed to go higher, the rescue mediums ascend to the home's upper floors. You know, it almost feels heavy. The air feels so much heavier, heavier. up here. I feel a heaviness, as though whoever it is has come up with us. So they're not confined to one room. They're moving, you see, aren't they? It's very heavy here, isn't it? Definitely. We're in here. They feel the need to smudge this room, don't they? Yeah. Smudging involves the burning of herbs in order to banish unwanted energies. But what within this room has provoked the homeowners to take such direct action? This is locked. <laughs> it's Do you locked. know what? I can hear someone laughing. 
what we're standing in front of. Dressing table. The dressing table with the mirror. mirror. A very old dressing table. A mirror being very significant. <gasps> you just seen Alison, Alison! Look! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> you're <flying>. Look! <laughs> it's the eagle. It's the eagle! <laughs> the eagle engraving on the top of the box is eerily similar to Jackie's psychic drawing. This is it. This is where we're going to be. Hold it and see I am. I'm going to sit and hold it. Sensing that the jewellery box is connected to the spirits within the house, the rescue mediums decide to use psychometry, where an object is used to create a link between themselves and the spirits. And I've got that ringing in my ear, really, really high-pitched mm. ringing. Somebody's desperately trying to tune. Mm. Yeah, see what you pick up from him. See what you feel. Messing about. He wants to do ringa ringa roses. Does he need our help? Yeah. Because he's he trapped. He he does. Why doesn't he go over to the spirit world? What's wrong? Alison struggles to connect with the child spirit who seems lost and disoriented. What's he doing? He's pinching my arm. Stop it. Up next, can the rescue medium save the lost child spirit? Oh my God. And then... He's going now, he's moved, hasn't he? The hidden comes forward. Within this home in suburban Toronto, the rescue mediums have met two spirits. I feel a heaviness, as though whoever it is has come up with us. One, a female guiding spirit. A push. The other, a terrified little boy who greatly needs their help, but who may be too frightened to receive it. Why doesn't he go over to the spirit world? Why didn't he go over? I didn't know where I was. I think we need to get him over into the light from this room. From this room, yeah. yeah. Who does he want to see most in the world? Mum. OK, ask him to call for his mum. Alison connects with the child spirit's mother. Oh, that's lovely. Get him to go. I can see him. Yeah, good. He's turned round and he's saluted us, Jack. The lost child spirit has found the light. Okay. Yeah, he's there. Okay. Wow. What a character. Yeah. Well, that's because he needed. He yeah, was much. But I'll tell you what, little bugger as well, because he was pinching. Somebody needs to be here. Oh. Well, Alison, what? somebody stood right behind you. I don't turn around. I can, can feel that? it. I can feel it. Suddenly, a dark new presence has entered the room. My ears buzzing like that. Tingling down my back. He's going now. He's moved, hasn't he? Those doors Mortals are open. open. That wasn't oh, open before. Oh, my God. Do you know what? They were locked. They're capable. They can move things. They're capable of moving things. Alison, we've got three. As night falls, the rescue medium sense the spirit's great need and prepare for an emergency rescue. Oh, my God. He's showing me images, war images. Alison establishes contact with the soldier spirit, who seems trapped within his violent past. Somebody's got something in the hand. And they're banging it down. I think it's a sword. <laughs> Why has she come forward then? I think she's his wife. She's just told me. 
she's not trapped. She's come to help him. It's him. The guiding spirit has returned, seeking to aid in the rescue. So I've got her here, and you've got him. We have to make the healing colours come in. Well, that's nice. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. And then get them to walk through the colours. OK. The rescue mediums visualise an array of healing colours, which will help the soldier spirit pass. So oh, ask him if he can see the colours. Can you bring the colours into him? Yes. yes. Tell him to look yes. beyond the rainbow and he'll see her there. He can see her. Good. The rescue begins. She's holding her hands out to him. Get him to hold her hand. She's got his hand. Yeah. Him. I felt the strength. Yeah. He's... But he'd had flashes of that. That's what he he's, was. That he'd stuck. got and not wanting to be there, wanting to be with her. Next, the rescue mediums present their findings to the homeowners and compare it to independent research to see what matches up. Connections here are just oh, amazing. Within this home in suburban Toronto, the rescue mediums have shown both the little boy spirit and a troubled soldier spirit into the light. They now sit down with the homeowners to present the results of their investigation. And we're gonna start off reading our premonitions out to you. Now then, a road traffic accident, and you, you've said about Suzanne, your daughter, yes. was in the road traffic accident. And then straight after that, I got 10 past eight, the That's time. That's the time it occurred, yeah. In 2006, Joe and Mary's daughter, Suzanne, was in an unfortunate car accident. It took Suzanne nearly a year to recover. So we're going to talk about what we found when we walked around. Outside, we encountered a spirit of a lady, and this lady followed us right through the house, literally pushing us from room to room um, because she wanted us to get. We went right up to uh, the bedroom, and this, your bedroom has a totally different feel to the rest of the house. Do you know, it almost feels heavy. The air feels so much heavier, heavier. up here. Yeah, my daughter and I feel that all the time, going into our bedrooms. We always feel there's somebody beside us or following us. Right, and that's very, very interesting. Yeah. 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 When we got into um, the bedroom, we saw a little box you have. Jewelry box. I was so blown away when I saw that. Alison! Look! Stop! Look! Look! That is what is on the front of mm -hmm. your little jewellery mm -hmm. box. We did psychometry on the little box, and that is when we started to get the connection. I saw um, a young boy, he said he, he hadn't gone over to the light because he didn't know where he was. We've since found out that, um, that the little boy's name was Joseph Mulholland. Jackie and Alison believe the little boy's spirit was Joseph Mulholland, great-grandson of the original homesteaders. On January the 25th, 1897, at the tender age of nine, Joseph succumbed to scarlet fever. Very, very sad indeed, obviously, because he was so young. This is his death certificate here. It's highlighted Joseph Mulholland, nine years of age, and that he died of scarlet fever. Now, what, what does that date represent there? It looks like January 25th. Is that a birth Let date? Let me have a look. What year is it? Because His date of death. Because I was born on January 25th. Oh my gosh. That's my birthday. Yeah. That's my birthday, yeah. So he's got the same name and he was born in the same. Uh, yes, That's he's got the birth. same name and he died on the day I was born. Birthday. Yes. The connections are just. Oh, connections here are just amazing. You're not going to believe these connections now. When we thought we'd finished, I saw uh, a man in a uniform. Alison, what? somebody stood right behind you. I don't turn around. Who needed our help, who seemed to be stuck in this time frame of a war uh, condition. 
we had to get him to deal with that first so that his pathway could be cleared for him to go forward and we got him to, to, to see the light. All of that took place in your bedroom and there's more. We know who this gentleman is. Okay. It's Henry Mulholland. The rescue mediums believe that the soldier spirit was Henry Mulholland, the man who in 1897 had originally farmed this land. As a soldier during the War of 1812, Henry fought in the battles of York, Stony Creek, and Lundy's Lane. On May the 11th, 1833, while sailing home from Belfast, his ship struck an iceberg and sank. Henry never returned to his family. If you look at this family tree, that's his great-grandson, is Joseph. Jackie and Alison believe that this generational connection to the land is what kept both Henry and Joseph within this modern home. So it's two family members that were both here. But what of the guiding spirit who led the rescue mediums to both Joseph and Henry? She was a helper and she was Henry's wife. The ladies believe that Jane Mulholland came forward to help her family into the light. Joe, because you are so psychic, you will continue to attract spirit. That's what I've been told. Yeah. So there we go. Very good. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. The spirits within the home now settled. Jackie and Alison bid farewell to the homeowners. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 On this investigation, the rescue medium seemed to be both shaken and stirred. I know. Should we have a cheers? Oh, Alison. What? We can't do this. Why not, Jackie? It's a very dry martini. <laughs> and you know why it's a dry martini, Jackie? No, Alison. <laughs> why is it a dry martini? Because you're going to be driving.